Hello, my name is Dennis, and welcome to my Trailer Park White Trash Mobile Home Kitchen. I really do live in a mobile home, in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. Today I'm going to make an Italian meatloaf. Now don't cringe at the idea. I know a lot of people find meatloaf boring. My mother used to make a meatloaf that I can best describe as the unacknowledged obese relative of the meatball. She used basically the same ingredients and then she slathered it all over with tomato paste and baked it. I ate it as a child. I didn't know any better. I was never encouraged to make meatloaf as an adult until I attended an Italian cooking class where we made an Italian meatloaf and it was rather good. And then I found a meatloaf in a cookbook by Joe Petoja and I modified that for this recipe that we're going to do today. And I gave this recipe to a friend of mine who loves meatloaf and his wife made it for him and he called me on that Sunday to tell me that it was the best meatloaf he ever tasted. So I don't think you have to be afraid that this is going to be a very boring meatloaf. You can probably give this to your friends or your family without any embarrassment at all. So let's get into our ingredients for this recipe. As I describe the quantities of the ingredients here, you'll notice that I actually have more than what I'm giving you as far as quantities. I'm going to be making two meatloafs today, but I'm going to give you the quantities that you need to make one meatloaf. So I have here one pound, one half pound rather, of lean ground beef and one half pound of lean ground pork. You will need one half pound of ricotta cheese, three eggs, one quarter cup of freshly grated Parmesan cheese. I'm actually using Romano because I like that better. Some freshly grated nutmeg. I have that here. I'm going to be using my nutmeg grinder for that. One half teaspoon of salt. One quarter teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper. One half teaspoon of garlic powder and one teaspoon of onion powder. One quarter cup of finely chopped parsley. One half cup of breadcrumbs one quarter pound of prosciutto. What I really need is about eight to ten slices. I've got s some kitchen string because I'm going to be tying this up. It sounds kind of odd to be tying up a meatloaf, but you'll see that when we get there. And then I have, I'll be needing about two tablespoons of butter, about a tablespoon of olive oil, and then finally some dry white wine. So those are the ingredients for our meatloaf. I find that ricotta cheese right out of the container is a little bit too moist. So what I do is I put it on paper towels. I'm using my good paper towels here rather than my free stuff. And spread this on. This is about three level, three layers rather, of paper towels. And then press another three, la three layers of paper towels on top. And just press this down turn it over it's already starting to come through a little bit here and I let this sit aside the paper towels will absorb this moisture and then that'll dry our, our um, ricotta cheese out for us so it'll be dry enough for our recipe while our ricotta cheese is sitting and drying I'm going to start mixing my ingredients here so I have my meat in there I'm going to put my eggs in And there it is. I'll set those aside. So my eggs are in there. My cheese. Again, I'm using Romano rather than Parmesan. Salt and pepper. I need to wet my hands here. I like to work with fresh nutmeg. I think it has so much of a better flavor. So I'm just going to grate some fresh nutmeg in there, maybe an eighth to a quarter of a teaspoon. And then my onion powder, garlic powder, fresh ground pepper, salt, and my chopped parsley. And the only thing you can do is get your hands in there. It, it's messy, but it mixes everything so much more nicely. Before I put the breadcrumbs in, I'm going to put the 
ricotta cheese in. So let's let me bring that over and I'm going to show you the ricotta cheese. You may think this is going to be hard to get off the paper towels because I smeared it on there, but this actually comes off the paper towels very easily. See how easily that separates from the paper towel? And there's our dried ricotta cheese. So I'll mix that into the meat. A lot of meatloaf recipes use breadcrumbs moistened with milk or water to add moisture. But this recipe uses ricotta for the source of the moisture. I think it does give a very nice flavor to it. Okay, now let me look at the texture of this. This is kind of a very soft texture. I think by adding some breadcrumbs, this is going to hold into a meatloaf shape much better. So let me put in some of these breadcrumbs and start working this together. Already this is starting to stiffen up. I need some more. I don't think I'm going to use all of these. I think I'm pretty close to the texture I want. Let's see. Now that's still kind of soft. I'm going to put in all of this breadcrumbs. I want it to be stiff enough that it's going to hold a loaf shape very well. All right, this is now I can feel this. This is starting to get good and stiff. That's the texture that I want. Should probably have this bowl on a rubber mat so it won't make so much noise. Okay, look how nicely that holds a shape. That's what I want. It's firm enough to hold a, a loaf shape. That'll be easy to work with when I make my loaves. First thing I do is lay out some string here. This is just common kitchen string. I lay this down. I put one long piece down first and then some shorter cross pieces. And then I start laying the prosciutto down on top of the string. It tears easily because it's cut paper thin, but that's all right. As long as this is overlapped fairly nicely, it'll cover the, the meat fine. And I'm just gonna shape this into a loaf. You can see how nicely that shapes. And then you just place this down on top of the prosciutto. Before I wrap it up from the sides, I put a couple of pieces on here to cover the end, one on either end. And then start bringing up the prosciutto from the sides. Start wrapping this up. So our meat is wrapped and then start bringing in your, bringing up the strings and tying it off. And then bring in my one long piece to secure the ends.
And there it is, our neatly wrapped meatloaf, all wrapped in prosciutto and tied off. That tying and the prosciutto is what holds that meat together, so it's very easy to work with as we brown it in preparation for going into the oven. And I start off by browning the ends first. So for this, you have to hold it up. I'm going to set my timer for three minutes because I find it's best to sear this at about three minutes per side. I started off with medium heat. I'm going to reduce this to about medium, medium low because the pan will start, I mean the fat will start to smoke a little bit. It's okay if it smokes a little, but you don't want to actually burn the butter in the pan. Okay, so that has been browning for three minutes. I'm going to turn this on to the other end. Distribute the fat a little bit. You can see how beautifully browned that looks already. This is the only time where you really have to stay here with it to hold it up in the pan while it's browning. So we're continuing our, our browning here. To do the sides, it helps to have a couple of spatulas handy. You can hold that up if it starts to fall over. This is actually looking pretty stable. But if you can see how beautifully browned that is, that's what makes the loaf so pretty. It kind of looked raw, although the prosciutto was cooked. It almost had a raw look earlier, but this browning is what gives it a beautiful color before it goes into the oven. Okay, so we have finished browning our meatloaf. Look at how beautiful that is. As I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be doing two of these. So I'm going to set this aside in my roasting pan, and then I'll prepare the second meatloaf. When both of them are ready, we'll pop them in the oven for our final baking. All right, our, our meatloaf has finished browning. I'm going to transfer this finally to our baking dish. As I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be cooking two of them. My oven is heating. These have to bake at 350 degrees until they come up to an internal temperature of about 150 degrees, and then they'll be ready to eat. My meatloaf is ready to go into the oven. I'm going to put about half a cup of white wine on the bottom. And then this is ready to go into the oven. I'm very fussy about internal temperature, so I like to use a probe and a digital thermometer. So I'm going to set this up with the probe into one of my loaves. And then, as I put this into the oven, I'll have my thermometer on the side here. Just have to make sure that's not going to be knocked over. And that way I can monitor the internal temperature of my meatloaf while it's roasting. As I said earlier, this is going to bake at 350 degrees, and I'm looking for an internal temperature on my thermometer of 150 degrees. And that'll be our indication that it's done and ready to eat. What I'm going to do is let these sit for about 15 to 20 minutes and that'll allow the finished temperature inside to actually come up to about 160 because the heat from the outside will continue to migrate to the inside. Our meatloaf has been resting, so this is about ready to carve. I want you to see what it looks like when it's being carved. As you can, the beauty, I think, at this point is you can see the parsley inside. It's beautifully tender. It's very moist. This is going to be a wonderful meatloaf for dinner. Again, that is not a boring meatloaf. This is something you can proudly serve to your guests. So we're ready to eat. The vegetables are on the table. I have my meat ready, so let's go have dinner.